Somebody, you are blessed by that word, by that song. Put your hands together for Jesus. God is speaking already. I'd like you to lift your voice and glorify Him for His presence in the house this morning. Where two or three are gathered in His name, there He is in the midst of them. God is here for someone this morning. Is here to bless. Is here to enrich. Is here to heal. Is here to deliver. Is here to save. If you are that man, lift your voice and let the Lord hear you this morning. Let Him know you are here. Is turning. Shame to glory, trial to testimony is bringing an end to that ordeal, is terminating every concern this morning. Lift your voice and let the Lord hear you. Let Him know you are here. Let Him know you are set to be the next person to testify. Give Him the glory for the privilege of life. I slept and I woke. Not because I'm strong, I slept and I woke. Not because I'm better, I slept and I woke. The psalmist said, because the Lord sustained me. If you are that kind of person, lift your voice and let the Lord hear you this morning. Let the Lord hear you this morning. Blessed be your name. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. By this service today, somebody's story is changing for better. Amen. Whatever could not stop you from coming to this service. The rain didn't beat you at all. You beat the rain. I see obstacle bind down for you today. Amen. Lift your hand and glorify him. And let's worship him.
worship him exalt him and glorify him give him the praise give him the glory give him the glory and praise let him know you are here this morning magnify him tell him there's no one that can take your place everywhere anywhere you remain the same the God yesterday the God today and you are my God forever glorify him thank you heavenly father blessed be your name in Jesus mighty name we have worshipped because you are worshipped the most high every contention standing on your way today they become leveled in the name of Jesus by your worship this morning I see the heaven open over you in the name of Jesus by your worship this morning receive divine attention but into your issues in the name of Jesus you are blessed let me welcome your neighbor or tell him I have dominion give him a high five with a smile you have dominion I have dominion all right you may be please be seated and the winning camp is the shouting camp the winning camp is a rejoicing camp I have a word of prophecy for someone here this morning. Your rain is falling. I say your dry season is over. Now whatever you are not able to handle from the beginning of the year. Before the end of this month. God will surprise you. The heaven shall open over your business. The heaven shall open over the work of your hand. Amen. Receive financial visitation. Amen. Isaiah 30 and verse 23. By the way, you had those testimony this morning. Promotion. Out of so many that applied, she was number five. You had a testimony. That elder looked like a 40 years old man or 40 years young man he said 70 you will see your own days fulfilled anytime you hear testimony is an indication that this word is available here you have one of the testifiers that wrote I knew I received a call while I was in Canaan land a pastor was calling from another station that someone needs attention so, who is this? That the baby was in Britain. But here the testimony this morning. The baby is kicking. Whatever has died. Whatever is not working. I say come alive again in the name of Jesus. We like to remind us. And you are welcome once again into this service. It's a special anointing service. So, expect something special. Expect something special. What does it mean? Something unusual. I don't know if you have been anointed anywhere before, but something special will answer for you in this anointing service. It's anointing for exploit. Anything that represents breakdown and barriers will give way for your breakthrough this time. We have uh, been looking at in our running team for the Sunday services gateways to financial fortune. Say with me, gateways to financial fortune. As a way of reminder, the team of the month, the prophetic team of the month, is financial fortune is my heritage. And remind, remember, heritage is what belongs to you by reason of birth or what has been stored for you before you arrived. In redemption, you have heritage of financial fortune. You are not redeemed to be poor. You are not redeemed to be empty. You are redeemed to be enriched. You are redeemed to be in financial dominion. In Revelation 5 verse 12, it says he has redeemed us unto our God and among the seven redemptive blessings, he has redeemed us to riches. 
Today, I see financial fortune answer for you. But it's one thing to have heritage is another thing to have the access. That's what we're looking at. Gateways to financial fortune. Gateways to financial fortune. I see the ways open for you in the name of Jesus. Gateways to financial fortune. We must understand that scriptural light gives us access to our inheritance. Every understanding Revelation, light of scripture opens us to our inheritances. Every time you understand a subject matter of scripture, when you hear what others see, I mean when you see what others hear, your inheritance is delivered. You see, if you observe from redemption, you will always hear something then see it in order to enter it. That's God's style. No matter how much you are hearing it, until it is captured in your mind, until it is captured with a picture, it is not delivered. Today, I see the scriptural picture of your financial fortune delivered to you in the name of Jesus. In that scripture, in third John 2, it says, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. And being held, even as your soul prospered, even as your soul prospered, God wants to deliver financial fortune to you. His intention, his greatest wish, is that you have a financial affluence. And I don't care where you are now. Look, even if you are in the pit and you have a picture of the top, you will get to the top. Your picture defines your future. Your picture opens you up. Your picture is your imagination. Your picture is what you can see. In that scripture, in John 3 and verse 3 to 6, it said, this is how the kingdom of God operates. It said, verily, very I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see. Say so me see. He cannot see the kingdom of God. You want, the kingdom of God is full of riches. The kingdom of God is full of blessing. The kingdom of God is full of heritages. Until he sees, he cannot do what? He, he cannot, except a man be born again, he cannot see. He says, except a man be born again, he cannot see. Now look at the next verse. Verse 4. He said, Nicodemus asks him, how can a man be born of when he's old? And Jesus answered him in verse 5. He said, except a man. He said, Jesus answered, verily I say unto you. Except a man be born of water and water and the spirit, it cannot enter. You see before you enter. Wherever you cannot see, you cannot enter. It doesn't matter even if it's yours. But scriptures helps us to see. That's why you must not look down on scriptures. Scriptures helps us to see. Isaiah 2 and verse 1. It says, And the word of the Lord, which Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw. The word of the Lord, which Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw. So, seeing through scripture delivers our heritage to us. No wonder in 2 Peter 1 and verse 3. He said, according to his divine power, he has given us all inheritance, all things, according to his divine power, has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. So it is through the sighting of your redemptive blessing in scriptures that your blessings are delivered. This time, I see your blessing delivered in the name of Jesus. So every scriptural discovery is a highway to our high places. Every scriptural discovery. When you discover, your level changes. When you discover, you recover. When you discover, you possess. When you discover, you secure. Lack of discovery keeps you on the same spot. On any subject. When you discover, light comes. And when light comes, shame goes. When you discover your position is delivered. Today, by the light of scriptures, 
I see your delivery in the name of Jesus. Now, what is financial fortune? Somebody may ask. If I have financial fortune as my heritage in redemption, in the covenant, what is financial fortune? Because recognition determines allocation. You cannot be allocated to what you don't recognize. What is financial fortune? Is having all your needs met according to the riches in glory, according to God's riches in glory. Philippians 4 and verse 19. It says, And my God shall supply, but my God shall supply how many? All your needs according to his riches in glory. Your sal I mean your labor we earn you wages. But the blessing in the covenant we command supernatural abundance. According, not according to your salary, not according to what is your bank account. It's having your needs met according to God's riches. The question is, how rich is your God? The all-breasted God. The one that is called, his name is El Shaddai. All sufficient. Listen to me. No matter who you are as a man, you are not all sufficient. The Bible speaking in 2 Corinthians uh, five, 3 and verse 5, it says, we are not sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. You are not, you are deficient, my friend, but God is sufficient. And when you have financial fortune connected to you in God, Every of your need is met. As the need is coming, the supply is waiting. Enter into the same realm in the name of Jesus. What is financial fortune? It's having, in, it's having in addition what others are dying to get. Having in addition what others are dying to get. What people are looking for. What people are running from pillar to post for. Is what is surplus to you. Is what is addition to you. What is cast to others is surplus to you. In Matthew 6, Andrews, if you start from verse 25 to verse 33, it said, don't bother about what to eat, what to wear, what to drink. He said, your father knows that you have need for all these things. He said, but if you want to get the things others are dying for, he said, seek him for the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. Today, what is cast to others will be addition to you. Yeah. What it means is this. What is cast to others will be your own fridge benefit. Today, I see you experiencing surplus in the midst of scarcity in the name of Jesus. What is financial fortune? This is very important. Because definition is what secures you from deviation. And what you cannot define, you cannot annex. Now, number three. What is financial fortune? It is prosperity with posterity. It is not once upon a time. It is entering into God's abundance and it speaks in your life in all ramifications and even beyond you. Prosperity with posterity. The Bible gives us a good picture in Psalms 112 from verse 1. He said, blessed is the man that feared the Lord. He says, that, that delight greatly in his commandment. He says, his seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed with financial fortune. He said, wealth and riches shall be in his house. His righteousness endure forever. And if you read further down, it gives you a picture of prosperity with posterity. Now listen to me. I'm talking about somebody in this service. By your testimony of financial fortune, they will make reference to you everywhere you go. Amen. You will be that reference of a testimony that God blesses people in the name of Jesus. Amen. What then is the covenant? This is all available in the covenant. In Deuteronomy 8 and verse 18, it says, For thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee the power to get wealth. Financial fortune is available in the covenant. And every redeemed child of God is a covenant child. 
every redeemed child of God, Jesus connects you to the blessings of Abraham. He says, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which is swear unto thy father, as it is this day. That is, the covenant is still working today. The covenant is still answering today. Your location, your season, notwithstanding, the covenant will answer your life today. But redemption brings you into the covenant. But what is the covenant? What then is the covenant? A covenant is a deal enacted by God based on well-defined terms and sealed with an oath. It is a deal enacted by God based on well-defined terms and sealed with an oath. Oath in Psalms 89 and verse 34. He said, My covenant will I not break, neither will I alter the words that proceed out of my mouth. God makes a covenant between us and Him. He made it with Abraham. Genesis 22 and verse 16. Genesis 22. And verse 16. Take note, it is a deal. But it's not just a deal. It is backed up with an oath. There is a swearing in it. Look at what God said. And God said, By myself have I sworn, says the Lord, for because thou had done these things, you have done what my covenant says you do, and had not withdrawn your thy sword, Thy only son, then what, look at what I will do. He says, that in blessing, I will bless thee. If you are a son of Abraham, let me hear your amen. amen. I will multiply thee. I will multiply thy seed as the stars of, of heaven and as the sand which is on, at the sea. He says, at the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gates of thy enemy. Receive that blessing this morning. I said receive that blessing this morning. It is a covenant made with an oath. When God was looking for what to swear by, he didn't say anything greater than him. So he swore by himself. He said, Abraham, I swear by myself, I will bless you and your children. I multiply you and increase you. Today, receive that blessing in the name of Jesus. However, we must understand that the covenant contains the word. The covenant contains the blessing. The covenant also carries responsibility. There is word. There is the blessing. The blessing. And one of the blessings is financial fortune. But it also carries a responsibility. When a promise goes with responsibility is upgraded to a covenant. When a promise goes with responsibility, is upgraded to a covenant. In Deuteronomy 7, and verse 7 to 9, God said, look, you children of Israel, you are not just blessed because you are blessed. I am a covenant keeper. He said, the Lord the, did not set his love upon thee, nor, nor chose you, because you were more in numbers than any people. For ye are fewest of all. You are so in, incompetent. You are not capable. He said, but what? The Lord has chosen you because he is a covenant keeper. In verse 9, he said, because he is a covenant keeper to a thousand generations. Today, by the covenant, I see your level changing financially. I told you I said an amen. amen. Well, how, what, what, how powerful is the covenant? How will the covenant, what will it do to me concerning my finances? I'd like us to know that the covenant is the answer to any curse. In case you are here this morning and you say, well, 
My own is nobody in my lineage has ever risen. No one lift up his head. He said, and I lift up my eyes and I saw four horns. And I said, what are these horns? He said, these are the horns that scatter Judah and Jerusalem. That no one lift his head. That's Ze Zechariah 1 and verse 18 to 19. In case there is a siege to financial prosperity, to financial dominion, by the covenant, I see them broken today. Even when God calls the ground, and he said the ground is caused, and the best the ground will bring out is thorns and tissues. That's Genesis 3. In Genesis 8, and verse 20 to 22, God turned around the course because of the covenant of giving. And God said, I will no more cause the ground for my sake. Therefore, I'm saying to someone this morning, the covenant is superior to your circumstance. The covenant will change your level this morning. By the covenant, I see your, your level changing in the name of Jesus. One more. The covenant can swallow any economic climate. It can swallow any harsh economic climate. Even if there is recession, the covenant is superior to recession. When they say everyone is going down, every business is going down, it's not your business they're talking about. Say with me, I'm a covenant child. I cannot hear you at all. Say, I'm a covenant child. In Genesis 24, 26, we saw from verse 1 to verse 16, Genesis 26, verse 1 to 16, we saw Isaac in the midst of farming. Isaac had a hundredfold result and the Philistine envied him. Why? Because he is the son of the covenant. I don't know what I'm talking about this morning. Because of the covenant, every contention over your financial advancement, I see them bow today in the name of Jesus. You better say better amen. amen. Every redeemed child of God is connected to the covenant of Abraham. Every redeemed child of God, you are connected to the covenant of Abraham. Now listen to me. The Israelis you see today, they are children of Abraham. We are children of Abraham by redemption. But you see, they so believe in the covenant of Abraham so much that an average Israeli believe there's nothing he wants to do, he cannot do. There's nothing he wants to do, he cannot do. You know all the story of how Israel went back to the same where they are now was a desert. They went back there, they turned desert into a garden. Israel export food in the desert. They plant food on top of houses. The best agriculturists are Israelis. What are we talking about? The covenant is working for them. Anything they touch, financial fortune opens. Today, the same testimony will be your testimony. Amen. I'm not sure I heard it very loudly. Amen. Now, why covenant of financial fortune? Why the covenant? We need to know the purpose. When purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. Why the covenant of financial fortune? Why? Number one, to glorify God. To glorify God. Haggai 2 verse 6 to 8. He said, I will shake the heavens and I will shake the earth. And I will fill this house with my glory. What is the glory? The silver is mine. The gold is mine. So God is filling his house. If you're in the house, let me hear your amen. amen. God wants to unleash upon the church, upon everyone in his house, the silver and the gold. is shaking everywhere. So that the glory can come to you. And what is glory here? Is financial fortune. I'd like you to know poverty is shameful. Hello? Poverty degrades dignity. It's a spoiler. Poverty is not your portion. In that scripture, in Proverbs 18 and verse 23, it said the poor speaks with entreaty. You know, the poor... He speaks with entreaty. He speaks begging. He makes man lose dignity. That's why God will glorify you. Number two, God, why covenant of financial fortune? 
To make you a blessing. To make you what? A blessing. God is not looking for treasurer. He's looking for those that will be channels, pipes, to convey his blessing, to advance the kingdom, to reach the, to the needy, to advance his kingdom. God wants channels of blessing. In Genesis 12, verse 2 to verse 3, he said, and I will make you, I will bless you and make you a blessing. If you are that person to be a blessing, let me hear your amen. amen. Number three, why covenant of financial fortune? To advertise the gospel. He wants you to advertise the gospel. To error the gospel. To advance his kingdom. Zechariah 1 and verse 17. Someone is saying, well, I want to make sure people are transported to church. That's advancing the gospel. I want to make sure, oh, this department, that department is taken care of. That is advancing the kingdom. I want to make sure we are into the missionary evangelist uh, uh, mandate right now. Oh, I want to be part of that to make sure that every of those missionaries that I may know, we are advancing those places. We are taking care of things there. Today, as you advance the kingdom, God will advance you. I told you I said an amen. amen. But we must understand that the covenant has terms. And we're looking at very quickly practical terms of the covenant of financial fortune. Practical terms. The covenant answers to your response. It's not, it's a responsive covenant. When you respond to it, the demand, God responds to you with a blessing. When you respond to the demand, God responds to you with a blessing. Now, one of the practical terms in the covenant is titan. Titan is key to the world of financial fortune. Titan is key to the world of financial fortune. If you, if you, if you don't mind, titan is the gateway to the world of financial fortune. You want to assess the covenant of financial fortune, titan is the way to the world of financial fortune. In Malachi 3 and verse 10, it says, if you bring the tithe to my storehouse, it says, bring all the tithe to my storehouse, it says, that there may be meat in my house, it says, prove me, hear it, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you what? Blessings that you will not have the capacity to hold it. That is financial overflow. That's financial fortune. Titan secures whatever remains. When you give God one of the ten, it secures the rest and keeps your heaven open. Titan makes you to assess financial fortune. Today, I see financial fortune answer to you. It opens your windows for financial fortune. It secures you financial rest. It secures you financial rest. It brings you blessing. Listen to me. God's covenant is more than money. It's about the blessing. You can have the money and you don't even enjoy it. It gives you the blessing and gives you what it takes to enjoy it. So that's what it does. Financial fortune. When you engage in Titan, it opens you to financial fortune. Abraham was a Titan. In that Genesis 14, verse 19 to 21, when he came back from the battle, the Bible said he gave the tithe of all and he received the blessing. He gave the tithe of all. I saw Jacob. Jacob was a titan. Genesis 28 and verse 22, he was a titan. Today, as we engage in our titan, I see the heaven open. I, I'm not sure I heard it very loudly. You see, in a covenant, there is the blessing when you respond and there is a repercussion when you don't respond. He said, if you are not a tighter, he said, I will open you to devourer. I had a testimony of sometime this lady, she just discovered when she has car and discover that a rat enters the car, and they will enter into the engine and all they are looking for is the wires. They just start eating all the wires. Every time she will carry it back to the mechanic, they work on it. But say, but why, why? 
And she remember, I have not been tightened. The moment she decided to start tightening, everything just turned. The, the rat went back to where they were coming from. Listen to me. The children of Israel were in the wilderness. It was not that the wilderness was safe. It was because they were secured. There were snakes there. There were scorpions there. But there was an edge. When you are a tighter, what the heat upon others doesn't reach you. Today, I see your finances secured. I'm not sure I heard it very loudly. We had, there's one of American, is a Bible believer, American financier, a financial testimony. That's, his name is J.C. Penny. J.C. Penny runs retail businesses. At the time, his business was going down. And his wife told him, he said, can you see, you have stopped tightening. And he started tightening. Then everything started jumping up again. Today, whatever is going down, as you begin to lay to heart to secure your place in the covenant, I see your heaven open in the name of Jesus. Amen. We must recognize that your, finance, your giving is not a financial donation to help God. It is, a, it is actually a transaction. Your giving is not a donation. You are too, you see, I and you put together, there's nothing you give to God that helps God. It's rather going to help you. Say I hear. Your giving is to help you. It opens the way. I've told, I was told the story of the elephant. The elephant consumes 140 pounds of food every day and must excrete 100 pounds. If it does not excrete 100 pounds for manure so that the grass can grow again and it will eat the grass, then it's ready to die. So when you open up to God in your giving, you are transacting. The heavens are open to you. Today, I see the heavens open to you in the name of Jesus. As we try to round up this service, what are the free benefits of covenant practice? This covenant practice, what are the free benefits? We'll look at three of them very quickly. Number one, causes and plague are averted. It averts causes and plague. Your giving can turn around darkness into light can avert plague plague of stagnation plague of set of devourers your giving can avert it can stop the activity of terror over your finances over your family over the work of your hand in second samuel 24 verse 24 to 25 we saw david made an error he counted the children of Israel against God's will. And God said, look, 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 you have erred. He said, choose one of these three things. And the three options were very bad options. He said, you either go to battle and your, your adversary will kill many of you. Or you have three years of famine. Or you have plague coming upon the people. The three options were bad. And David said, look, all these options, one, A, B, and C, are all not good. Then he looked for an offering. He said, give me a seed. And he raised a sacrifice. As he raised that sacrifice, if you read that very well, the Bible says, and the plague was stale. Every satanic siege over your life, over your finances, over your business is ended today in the name of Jesus. Amen. These are the fringe benefits. You see, covenant practice has no side effect. You know, when you take some drugs, they tell you it has side effect. The blessings of God make her rich and add no sorrow. Proverbs, 20, Proverbs 10 and verse 22. Number two, it engenders divine health. When you are a practitioner in the covenant, you enjoy divine health. You enjoy divine health. Psalms 41 and verse 1 to 3. It says, blessed is the man that consider the poor and is that consider the poor, the Lord will deliver him in the time of trouble. What kind of trouble? He said, He will preserve him and keep him alive. Say, alive. And shall be, and he shall be blessed upon the earth, and thou shalt not deliver him to the will of his enemies. He said, The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of sickness. There is intervention when he's sick. 
your financial, your, your giving opens you to supernatural health. Today, I see supernatural health answer to you in the name of Jesus. You know why God will give you health? As much as he give you financial uh, fortune, you need health to enjoy it. That's why you see, when they pray for people, they say long life and what? Prosperity. Long life without prosperity is, uh, is, uh, is a lot of question mark. Today, you will enjoy long life and prosperity. Amen. I told you I said an amen. amen. And number three, benefit. It brings rain of ideas. Rain of divine ideas. We saw that in Jacob, Genesis 20, 30, verse 27 to 30. Genesis 30, 27 to 30. And we saw Genesis 28 and verse Genesis 28 and verse 22 that Jacob was a titan. Today, I see the heaven open over you in the name of Jesus. We saw divine ideas for the man Job. What happened? Job, in Job 29 and verse 4. He said, when the secret of God, the, the ideas of God, ideas, rules the world, ideas to, give, to be, make you a solution provider, ideas to make you an invention, inventor, ideas, ideas, comes your way. An idea is what makes business, not money. If you have a better idea, you have a better business. Idea falls before any other thing. Today, great men and women of ideas are rising here in the name of Jesus. I told you I said an Amen. How do I trigger the covenant of financial dominion? How do I trigger it? Very quickly. Number one, become a child of God. Remember I said, Jesus connects us with the covenant of Abraham by redemption. So receive Jesus and you'll be connected to the covenant. John 1 and verse 12. As many as received him, to them he gave power to become the son of God. Number two, be spiritual. Be spiritual. Because your covenant father is spiritual. God is a spirit. And you see, because financial wealth, if you are not spiritual, you can begin to do carnal things. Somebody gets financial blessing and he just starts misbehaving. He wants to marry more wives. He said, now nah, I remember there's a chief taxi title that my father was supposed to collect in 1904. I am now going to represent my father. He will just be doing some very, very funny things. He buys things he doesn't want. You see, financial fortune is entrusted to the faithful. God sees the way you spend it to know whether you are qualified for the next. So you need to be spiritual. Abraham was a spiritual person. Isaac was a spiritual person. Jacob was a spiritual person. Because your spiritual positioning makes you to relate with the one that makes the covenant work for you. Be spiritual. Romans 8 and verse 6, it says to be spiritually, it, it says, it says to, be, to be carnally minded is there, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Ephesians 1 and verse 3, it says all good and perfect gift come from above, from the Father of light, in whom there is no variableness, no shadow of turning. The blessing comes to you when you are spiritually positioned. Number three, receive covenant knowledge. Job 22 and verse 22, he said, receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth. When, and lay up his word in your, in, his heart, in your heart. Then what will happen to you? Verse, the next verse said, if you return to the almighty, you shall be built up. Thou shall put iniquity away from thy tabernacle. Then what will happen? You shall lay up gold as dust and the gold of offer as the stone of the bruise. Today, receive financial fortune in the name of Jesus. So go for the terms of the covenant. Go and obey it. Go and respond to it. Number four, have faith in the covenant. Have faith in the covenant. Believe in the covenant. Just like you believe in divine health, just like you believe in salvation, believe in the covenant. The covenant will answer for me because I'm a tighter. The covenant will answer for me because I'm a giver. He said, believe the Lord your God. So shall you be established. Believe in the covenant. Say I hear. Hebrews 11 and verse 2. It said, it, said, and it said true faith the elders obtain a good report. Today I say good report answer for you in the name of Jesus. And number five have covenant or kingdom dreams. Have kingdom dreams. 
You see, begin to dream dreams. I don't care whether you are in one room right now. Dream dreams of building orphanages. Dream dreams. If it's in your heart, God will make it in your hand. First Chronicles 1 and verse, First Chronicles 29 and verse 3. David said, I have laid in my heart what to do for the kingdom of God. And God made it available. If it's in your heart, it will soon be in your hand. Lift up your hand and glorify him this morning. Father, let this word of your covenant answer in my life. Go ahead and declare the same. Let these words of the covenant answer in my life this morning. Let it answer in my destiny this morning. Give him praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. By the power in the, of the covenant, I see every dry season around you. And that in the name of Jesus. Somebody I know this morning wants to be a covenant child of God. You have struggled and struggled. But you see, covenant brings you into partnership with God. When you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you enter into the power of the covenant that makes things to work for you. You may be in church, but you are not saved. In that Galatians 3 and verse 13, it says, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. Be made a cause for us. For cause anyone has hung upon the tree that the blessing of Abraham may come unto you. You want to exchange your struggle, your concern for his blessing this morning. You want to be assured of eternity with God. It is true, Jesus. Wherever you are, allow me to pray with you. You want to say, Jesus, I want to give my life to Jesus, to you today. Become my Lord and my Savior. That man and that woman, rise on your feet. Allow me to pray with you. Let me pray with you this morning. You want to say, Jesus, I want you to be my Lord and my Savior. I want you to be the captain of my salvation. I've struggled life long enough. I've tried to make ends meet. It's not meeting. But come and be the center of the center of my life. I need your rest. He said, come unto me, all ye that live on. And are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That man and that woman rise on your feet. Now, if you're standing up, make your way right here to the front. I'd like to pray with you. You want to say, Jesus, I want you to be my Lord and my Savior. I don't want to return back the same way I came. I want you to be my master. I want you to be my Lord. I want to experience your power. I want to experience your peace. I want to experience your blessing. Church, are you watching? Are you clapping for these precious souls? Say yes to Jesus this morning. This is your day of salvation. It's your day of turnaround. Let Jesus be your Lord this morning. Let Jesus be your Lord this morning. When is your Lord, you, he becomes the owner of your life. The owner of your finance. The owner, what belongs to you belongs to him. Come and make Jesus your Lord today. He is the Lord over all. This is your day. It's your day of salvation. I'm still waiting for so many. This is your day. It's a decision you can, you, that will change your life forever. You cannot afford to throw away this invitation to give your life to Jesus. Now, if you're coming, make it fast. Now, everyone here this morning, I'd like you to pray with you. I will lead you in this prayer. Put your right hand on your chest and you will say this prayer with me. Say with me, Lord Jesus. Say one more time, Lord Jesus. Today, I give my life to you. Save me. Deliver me from the power of sin and Satan. Cleanse me by your blood. Write my name in the book of life. From today, I will serve you all the days of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. Father, I pray for this precious soul. The same grace that brought them, the same grace keep them. Let them be established in you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Say with me, I am now born again. God bless you. I'd like you to turn this way and go with these officials. They are waiting for you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Somebody, every yoke of lack around you, I see them broken this morning. Now, as we go into this anointing session, Every no, no, there is a testimony of financial blessing you have been longing to share. You will share this season. Yeah. Somebody, you are living that financial bracket. 
into another level completely this time. I'm not sure that person heard me very well. I'm not sure that person heard me very well. What will this anointing do this morning? This anointing will destroy every barrier on the way to your blessing. Every barrier. Isaiah 45 verse 1 to 3. He said, Thou says the Lord to his anointed to Cyrus. He said, With whom my hand has anointed him. Isaiah 45 verse 1 to 3. He said, We break every barrier. So every barrier to your approval, to your contract, I see the barrier lifted this time. Amen. You have not seen that amen very loudly. Amen. What more? This anointing will release the covenant blessing for financial fortune. There is blessing in financial fortune. In that Deuteronomy 15, number 6, it said, The Lord bless thee as he has promised thee. The, and by this blessing, he said, You will learn to many nations. Today, by this anointing, I see blessing attracted to you. Amen. See, those that have never met you will look for you to bless you. Amen. Get ready by this anointing. Everywhere your blessing has been tied, it will locate you this week. Amen. What more? This anointing will give you grace for compliance. Amen. Grace to, to make giving your habit. Grace to be ready to pay your tithe without any hitch. Grace to give to the next privilege without concern. Receive that grace this morning. I said receive that grace this morning. Supernatural abundance will answer for you by this anointing. Isaiah 60 and verse 5. It says, and the abundance of the sea shall, shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles. Today, I see the abundance of the sea. The and businesses, open doors, answer for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I told you I said an amen. amen. Rise your feet. Lift up your bottle of oil. Every time we anoint a thing, we provoke a change. Every time we anoint a thing, the sick become healed, the <laughs> barren become fruitful, the poor become rich. Now today, by this anointing, a change is coming for you. Yeah. You did not hear me very loudly. Yeah. In that, in that First Samuel sixteen and verse thirteen, First Samuel sixteen and verse thirteen, and David was anointed in the midst of his brethren. Everybody saw the innocent oil pouring down, but the spirit of God took over. He said, "And the spirit of the Lord came upon him from that day forward." From that day, he began to go forward by this anointing. Financially, I see you going forward. Yeah. Everything in this kingdom answered by faith. How many have faith in it? Now, this came here as chemistry mixture. But the moment we pray on it, the power of God comes upon it. Now, lift it up. Father, bless this oil today. Let it become a holy anointing oil. As everyone is anointed, let the power and the yoke of poverty be destroyed. Yeah. As each one is anointed today, let the heavens be opened. Yeah. Let the blessing that has been declared and more begin to answer for each one. Yeah. Anyone called sick in this house tonight, this morning, I command I heal him by this anointing. Yeah. So shall it be. Put a little in your palm. And anoint yourself and begin to declare the same this morning. Begin to declare the same. Anoint yourself and begin to declare the same this morning. Declare so that it can be cleared for you. Declare thou that thou may be justified. Go ahead and begin to declare the same. The heaven is open over me. The yoke and the barriers to my financial fortune is destroyed. Somebody is here right now. Somebody is fruitful right now. Somebody, your destiny is open. Abundance is open for you. You are living the wilderness region to the region of abundance this morning. By this anointing, the yokes are broken. Every generational link of lack is destroyed. Every stagnation is destroyed. 
Financial progress, financial abundance becomes your portion. Favor finds you. Favor finds you. Favor finds you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. By this anointing on your head today, receive the covenant blessing of Abraham. For divine help, receive it. For financial abundance, receive it. For supernatural wisdom, receive it. All that is available in the covenant of our financial providence, receive it this morning in the name of Jesus. By this anointing, every yoke over your destiny is broken in the name of Jesus. The heaven is open over you. As you step out this week, experience open heaven. Wave your hand and glorify him. Give him praise and give him glory. Bless his name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I see the heaven open over you this week. This week will be your week of open heaven. Hey, your heaven can be open and your heart be closed. The Bible says, and Jesus stepped out of the waters. Luke 3 and verse 20. He said, and his heaven opened. And the voice began to release. Now by the heaven open, receive favor this week. Yeah. By the open heaven, receive your appointment this week. Yeah. By your open heaven, receive that contract this week. Yeah. By your open heaven, that we send for you this week. Yeah. Whatever has been delayed by the authority that rules the heavens and the earth. Approval answers for you this week. Go well and return well. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed.